morning all all right so uh to uh the person who sent me the the board for the for the uh the, the power rankings thanks that actually looks really nice up there so replacing the date is this this nice um header for my board not too bad all right so some news today some big news actually First off, Nick Suzuki signs an eight-year extension with Montreal that's going to kick in next year, which means he's going to have the C. Nick Suzuki's going to be the captain. He's one of the better two-way forwards in the league. I If if he ever gets the face-offs, if, if he can ever be anywhere near as good in the face-off circle as Bergeron, and I don't mean as good, I mean anywhere near, um, he is absolutely fantastic. But it's a $7.875 million cap hit for Nick Suzuki. There will be those who say it's high. I think that's not bad. Because, again, it's for eight years. So he is not going to be going anywhere until at least 2030. They've got him signed until 2030. Because it kicks in after this year. So eight-year deal for Nick Suzuki. And I, I'm i not going to say for sure that he should send like a, a gift basket to Yasperi Kakanyemi. But he probably should. Because I, I think it's interesting that they're signing Suzuki to an eight-year extension uh, not that long after losing Kakanyemi. And they, they I, I, it just feels like maybe now there's more of a sense of we'd better get somebody signed before they hit that market and somebody might be able to offer sheet him. So Suzuki's done. They don't have to worry about that with him. And uh, Montreal, I, I think, did well here. Um, Boone Jenner. Boone Jenner has been named captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Which is kind of a surprise, but it's also kind of nice. Uh, there was a time in the NHL where being captain didn't necessarily mean you're the best offensive player on the team. It didn't mean necessarily you're the face of the team. You're just the captain. And so nice to see Columbus picks Jenner for the job. And uh, yeah, we'll see how things go for him and for the Columbus Blue Jackets. One of those teams to watch because there's a couple rookies in that lineup. Uh, so news out of New York today. And as a Rangers fan, you can let me know how you feel about this. Vitaly Kravtsov wants out. He's done. Uh, he's upset that he doesn't make the lineup. So because he doesn't make the lineup, he is refusing to report to the American Hockey League. And his agent has permission to speak to other teams. So other teams will have one or two reaction to, reactions to this. Either a reaction of, um, well, he's a really good player. I can't believe he got cut. Yeah, we'll talk to him. Or, well, if he won't accept an AHL demotion there... I'm not sure that I want him here because if I feel like he needs time in the AHL, right? So we'll see how things go. But for the Rangers, this is kind of a kick in the pants, right? This is not great. Uh, Kravtsov, very young player and doesn't make the cut. So the fact that his agent's been given permission to speak to other teams tells you that he's not really in their plans right now. So that I would think would hurt his value on the trade market. Uh, and yet, I would imagine there will be some teams that want to talk about getting Kravtsov into their lineup. Uh, this is a team that just gave up Butchnevich in the offseason. Again, uh, I, I hope the Rangers do really well. But this is one of those trends. They have to watch out that they're not giving away too many of the young players. Because if they do, uh, people will just blame James Dolan anyways, right? So I've already seen it. I've already seen the blaming James Dolan part, which may may actually have some validity to it right if you follow the new york knicks in basketball but yeah so we'll see how things go with the new york rangers and where kravtsov ends up um I, I could see a team like the kings giving him a call um i could see the canucks giving him a call just because you've got pud coles and in vancouver you had kravtsov right so yeah um anyways uh news out of uh the the skates and practices that are going on today mitch marner uh, collided with Wayne Simmons and left practice early after talking to the training staff. So it's only news because Matthews, of course, is going to miss a minimum of the first three games, actually, and in fact. So that reminded me to put this on the board because that's kind of big news too. But yeah, so Marner being out, it, well, if, if he was to miss any time and you're already short on Matthews, uh, we'll see how things turn out for Toronto uh, and and where that would put the lineups right uh but yeah so that's that's the thing we'll keep an eye on that right i think toronto plays tomorrow right there's nine games tomorrow i know there's two games today i've already got the board made up for the preview for today uh nine games tomorrow so uh yeah we'll see how long marner's over if if he misses any time because again when you're already short matthews you don't want to lose marner as well 
Uh, the Ottawa Senators have signed Parker Kelly to a two-year extension. Uh, the second year of that contract is a one-way contract. It's a two-way contract for the first year of it, uh, which only means that when they're in the AHL, they make a different uh, level of pay than what they do in the NHL. Um, if it's a one-way contract and they get demoted to the AHL, they still get their NHL pay while they're in the AHL. And then the NHL team gets a, a certain amount pulled off the cap. I think the max this year is $1.25 million for, for a guy being sent down. So yeah, Parker Kelly, I've, I've liked what I've seen of him so far. And it looks like we're going to get to see more of him this year for Ottawa. Uh, escrow. So it's all that wonderful stuff with escrow. So money that's immediately taken out of their accounts and put into an account where it might come back and it might not. This year, the number apparently has been set at 17.2%. So 17.2% of whatever players get immediately is taken off uh, and put into escrow. And then at a later date, they find out whether or not they get that money back, which uh, during the pandemic, uh, I, I think the attitude is one of, we'll see. The good news is since most, if not all buildings are gonna be at full capacity this year, um, that that honestly shouldn't be that bad this year. The escrow, some of that should go back to them, but I don't think it's going to be all of them. Um, I, I think I think things are going to change a little bit here, and I, I think that's going to be an issue when we get to extending this collective bargaining agreement, which is a what which weighs down the road, but it is something to keep an eye on because the escrow could carry over all the way until this this deal is actually completed, right? Uh, good news for Seattle. Marcus Johansson's been cleared. So there were five people went into protocols. Protocols do not mean a positive COVID test. They don't mean that. So when a player goes into protocol, it does not mean they've tested positive. It means they're in protocol. They're separated from their teammates. And then there's further testing and tracing and anything else that needs to be done gets done. So Johansson's cleared. Uh, and Donskoy, Alexiak, McCann are all maybe. They're all in the maybes. Uh, and if, if everything comes back clear for them, Seattle will have a full roster for their opening tonight. So uh, it is that, and it's the same as last year, it is an abundance of caution. The NHL being overly cautious, the NHLPA understanding it's overly cautious. And uh, yeah, so Johansson's in the lineup and we'll see the others. Uh, the only one that, that isn't in the maybes is Yarncroak. Yarncroak will not be in the lineup. Uh, but everybody else is a maybe. And Yanni Gord may not be as far out as people think. But uh, bad news for Caps fans, as I reminded myself when I got into talking about Marner, uh, Backstrom is on LTIR. Now, the way long-term injured reserve works means you must miss 24 days or 10 games uh, minimum. So whichever one of those comes first. So if you play 10 games in 22 days, then the 24 days doesn't matter if the 24 days before 10 games, that kind of thing. So yeah, Backstrom's on LTIR, which hurts it would mean that there's there's that cap space there for the caps which yeah caps first caps for caps yeah sure uh but that that space is only there as long as he's on LTIR so it doesn't necessarily mean that Washington's going to go out and get somebody uh Backstrom unless they think he's going to be out for a lot longer so if they do make an acquisition and if it's a you know pretty big contract they acquire that would point to Backstrom being out a lot longer than just the 10 games. But there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.